Hello and welcome to Security Academy. In this video, we will be discussing cross-site scripting, also known as XSS, a common attack that occurs on many websites. So, what is XSS? XSS is a category of attacks that allow an attacker to put client-side code through websites into the browsers of other users. JavaScript has access to sensitive data such as cookies, which attackers can use this kind of attack to steal a user's cookies and impersonate them online. Essentially, an attacker can attach code to a legitimate website that executes when a potential vi victim loads the website. The most popular ways for this attack to occur are malicious code added to the end of a URL or posted directly onto a page that displays user-generated content. For example, it is commonly seen on websites that have unvalidated comment forums. In this case, an attacker can post a comment consisting of e executable code wrapped in HTML script tags. Once that comment is on the page, when any other user loads the website, the malicious code between the tags will be executed by their web browser, and they will become a victim of the attack. Also important to note is that JavaScript can create HTTP requests, which can be used to send data back to the attacker. Additionally, client-side JavaScript can also help an attacker gain access to APIs that contain sensitive data, such as webcam data, geolocation coordinates, and other sensitive information. This diagram, as you can see, highlights the flow of an example XSS attack. First, the attacker sends a script-injected link to the victim as part of an email scam. Next, the victim clicks on the link and requests a legitimate website. The victim's browser loads the website, but also executes the malicious script. As a result, the malicious script sends the victim's private data to the attacker. Now, we will be discussing two different types of cross-site scripting, reflected and persistent. Reflected cross-site scripting is the most commonly seen XSS attack, where malicious code is added onto the end of a URL of a website, as seen in the example below. A user may receive this link from a BC email account that asks them to click it. The first part of the link looks safe and is a domain that we all recognize, but the code injected in the URL is malicious. Next, we have persistent cross-site scripting. This occurs on websites that allow users to post content that other users will load and see, such as a comment forum or a social media website. The malicious code will then execute every time the page is loaded by various users. For example, the comment below looks harmless at first, but any user that loads Mary's comment on their browser will become an attack, a victim to Mary's persistent XSS attack when her bad code here runs. If the site does not validate input for user-generated content, an attacker can insert code that other users' browsers will execute when the page loads, so more people who are like Mary can run malicious code. This attack is very popular and powerful, since the attacker might not even engage directly with any of the users that they are targeting. So, knowing all of this, how do you prevent cross-site scripting attacks? Remove or disable any markup that can contain instructions to return to run code. In HTML, this includes elements such as script, object, embed, and link. Modify user data so it cannot be used to run scripts. This is called input sanitization and ensures that users are not able to put their own scripts in unmoderated comment sections. Many web frameworks do sanitize user input by default. Lastly, web applications can set special rules for cookie handling that can mitigate cookie theft. There are many other ways to ensure that your website does not fall victim to a cross-site scripting attack, but these are the most common. Next, we will be covering SQL injection, another common website attack. 